Well, hey there, team, and welcome to Station Ears. Hey there team and welcome back to all oh, my lander. Look at it over there. It looks so uncomfortably angled. Welcome back to the OG base that we're chipping away at. We're doing quite well, I think. Uh, you know, we've uh, our oxygen and all that is still good, isn't it? Yeah, that's not bad. That's fine. So at the moment we're sort of, I don't want to say leisurely, but we're not really under the pump as much. So we're working on a few things. Specifically, we're working on um, setting up the logic for this. There, excuse me. Um, just get my bearings really quick. Now, someone pointed out... I'm sorry, guys. I love you all, but uh, I'm, I don't have a page open next to me at the moment. Someone pointed out that um, there is a limit here. I'll, I'll, I'll unpack this really quickly, but understand this is a bit of an advanced concept when it comes to the tracking. We're, we're essentially going to be putting a percentage track number through here or we're putting we're putting the the angle of the sun versus this thing's percentage this is assuming that the, in an ideal world at well let's not go to the 100% so let's go to the 0% side we might even need to turn the panel around at 0 it would be perfectly flush with the horizon 100% right when the horizon angle is 0 then the satellite dish's angle is zero, but it's not. You can see there, at its lowest, it's still on a, a slight angle, a slight incline. Someone said it was 15 degrees, and just eyeballing that, I could believe that. I don't know if it's precisely 15. I don't know where the number comes from, but I can see, you know, if, if we were to draw like a flat line straight out there, and then draw a line through the center of this, it could be 15 degrees, we'd say. Right, so this creates another layer of issue, essentially an inherent error built into the system. We'll address it later. It's not that important because ultimately we're still going to be pretty efficient, but this whole system of 180 divided by 100 sort of uh, assumes that, see how this dish is at an angle at its lowest incline, that it would actually be flush, that it would be right angles to the ground, but it's not. If you don't follow what I mean, um... I, I don't know how else I can explain it, to be perfectly honest. I, th I think I've explained it about as well as I can in that this doesn't behave ideally on paper, as you would hope. Um, now, the, the real kicker is these increments, are they all the percentage increments exactly 10%? Like, so is from 10% to 20%, is that the same sort of angle of, that it moves through? as say the next angle or when it hits 10 percent and then goes to zero is that a smaller angle do you know what i mean is it actually a true 100 100 percent division of this reduced 180 degree sort of uh transit space i i assume it is i'm, I'm assuming it is because it's dealing with percentages anyway but that you can see that in real systems in real life as well, where the, the end angles perhaps are cut off and they're slightly less. And that is a real pain in the bum. But anyway, I just thought I'd mention that because it's a really good point. It's a valid point. It's something that most people probably wouldn't think of. I didn't think of it. Um, okay. So, where were we? We uh, potentially... Oh, geez, Louise. Now, something else that we're going to have to do, because I hijacked the power to to support that system we do have to consider that our main sort of power grid is only this so when it comes to us charging batteries and stuff it probably makes sense to replug this thing in so we have that option available to us so we'll do that um we'll plug a couple of batteries in there we'll leave that weird solar panel one down that's on struggle street but it couldn't it couldn't hurt to have a little bit of a little bit of that. This, however, we will still need to use as open because these are our large batteries that we're still using for our suit. So 
so we'll pull that out and swap it out. So we still there's still some fiddly work that we need to do just to maintain the systems, but that's all good and well. Now, we discovered apparently there are smaller screws on this. Oh, bigger screw, smaller screw. Huh, that's so interesting. I just looked straight at it and didn't see it. So while I got that logic thing out, apparently, let's just do it now as well, because we're getting enough people that they're probably curious about this. Hold for... So that goes at one. And presumably... Sh uh, can, can, no, no, no. Alt. Oh, no, no, no. Just the other side. Silly sausage. Go back down to 1.8. But if we hold C, we can do decimal. That's so good. That is a life saver. That, because it always struck me as strange that in order to reroute the, the base memory of this block, the, it kind of defeated the purpose of having an actual um, logic kit if you needed a computer to program it for decimal places in a memory block. It just seems strange to me. It's like, well, why would I even use the logic if I have built the computer already? So this is good. We'll be able to do this without ever building the computer. Or, you know, we'll be able to do this first. But anyway, I digress. As I want to do. Let's uh let's look at plugging. This this gravity kills me, how I just ramp. If this was Lou Land, I'd be dead. Just flying into the sky. Alright, so there we go. It's gonna feed in our thing. We're gonna pop down a math unit. Now you can see we have power at the top. We have two inputs left and right, and we have our output. Let's think about this. Do a reader. What's the neatest way that I can do this without confusing people that this is all new to? See, because if I did if I did that, I'm still going to sort of have some cables crossing over each other. Uh, you know what? I might be able to just run the power cable up and over, perhaps, and run the input around, uh, put the math block somewhere in the middle, Oh, we can put the math block sort of like up here. When I say math, sorry, I meant memory. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make it a bit neat and tidy so it's easy to understand if you don't know what the hell's going on. We're going to do like this, all right? It's, it's going to be as neat as, as I can possibly make it and fairly compact as well. You'll see. All right. Let's get the groundwork because last episode I explained what we're going to be doing with these blocks, right? And then uh, we've got our memory block here. We don't want this hash nonsense. Now I wonder if I have to reset the value. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a directional feed either, which is really interesting. Huh, actually. Well, you could place it along there, could you? Oh, it's going to interfere with that. I don't really want to do that. We're going to have to deal with these bloody filters. Um, that's going to go data out. You know what, we can, let's put it like that. That's kind of a bit sexy. Do you still have one? No, it doesn't have 1.8, so we're going to have to deal with that. All right, when you say filter lower, you mean that one? No, oh, we'll throw that away. Sorry, Tim, we're going to have to stop and make some filters because this is one of those things that, um, I'll forget and I'll bloody die. And I don't really want that egg on my face. Wait, what am I doing? Can we not make filters here? Oh, it, it's not called a CO2 filter. It's called a carbon dioxide filter. Five iron. I'll make two more of those. Um, where's my iron? Not in there. Not in there. All right, let's go cook some more. Ten iron coming right up. feel a little uncomfortable kind of ignoring our farm and just doing the daily rounds. One thing I was a little bit concerned about is the molarity last time we checked of the CO2 in the system seemed a bit low. It also occurs to me what with all this filtering, I could probably purge my waste tank in there next time we're in there. Just to sort of top it up with CO2, it'd probably be very warm. Is there any chance that there's H2 in my waste tank? I don't think so. I don't think there's H2 in my system. 
in, in my breathing system. I think it's pure O2 in my intake. Hmm. That's interesting to me. All right, well, hang on. What if we do this? What if we go... Oh, you know what? Maybe we'll get this one ready to go because I want to do that. This is what I wanted to do. What's in that? O2 and a shitload of CO2. 22 mole. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right, well, I think we'll, uh, we'll consider putting it back into the system... Uh, I guess it's time to do our rounds anyway. Did I leave that on? I didn't. All right, so I replaced my filters. This is wonderful. How's that grid looking? Because it, it's back charging that. That's right, we're still yellow. Um, food, we're okay. Okay, cool. So we're going to do our rounds. I'm going to put the CO2 in the system. I didn't... I can't even remember what the temperature... Just, just then, I didn't actually look at the temperature. But my assumption is it's going to be a little warm. And, okay, so we do have ice ready to go. So the plan is going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to dump, my, well actually, you know what, let's just check this, oh there's 12 mole in that whole system, 2%, that's not bad actually, you know what, there's no reason to play with fire, we don't need to do it, but in the future what I'll do is probably dump my waste tank in there. And, uh, but it will presumably heat the room quite a bit, so then we'll have to do a bit of an oxygen thing. Alright. Hello, guys. Harvest potato. Yeah, look, the temperature's all sort of stabilised out quite well. You know, they're not heating the room too much. The system works. I think the secret source was having enough air... Well, air. Yeah. Let's say gas mixture in the coolant pipe system to have like real effective cooling. Because even I wonder what's going on. See that bit of pipe clipping through there. That could be carrying. You know, there could be a heat transfer component got radiating through there gently as it is. It's interesting. Anyway, let's pop all this down. Um, I'm quite proud of my little garden. All right, what are we at? 21 kPa, 24 degrees. Oh, you know the system. Set inward. Suck this room out. Oh, geez, that's a bit... Oh, I overdid it then. Oopsie daisies. Oops! I should not have done that. In fact, I totally did it all back to front. Well, hey, it's good to have cold as the problem for a change. I could do use the Lulan special and just drop a road flare in here. Uh, maybe I will. No, no, look, I did talk up the, uh, the waste tank. How much is that? I wonder... Can we, can you just give it a quick squirt? I just want to give it a really, but yeah, I tried to, but look, pretty much there's nothing, it's, it's empty. <laughs> okay, that's fine. It's cool. Well, that worked, that worked out fairly well, actually, um, sort of undid the damage that I did. We've probably got a bucket load of CO2 back in the system now. Look at that! Oh my god. Makes a boy happy. Alright, so. Set inward. I do want to call it a tiny little bit. Set outward. Come on. Yeah, that's all right. That pressure's fine. Potato has no sunlight. Yeah, so it's interesting. It's, it's not dying. It was in dying state because of the cold. 
but bec- it seems to have a pause state because of the sunlight. Whereas on Lou Land, where we're running them under lights the whole time, it pretty much never stops. So it's just an interesting observation. Um, okay, cool. Let's, uh, let's do our cycle. Um, you're inward already. Cool. We'll get to these. Patience, my friends. Um, probably cook up another baked potato, eh? The old 80 percenter. Maybe close the door. Open up. All right, well, we'll be busy chewing on that. All right, cool. So we've got all of this set up. The only thing we now need is a writer, basically. And that should, yeah, input one, input two, divide, output, write. That should be enough. Oh, there we go. We went from 16 to 96. So 80, it definitely is 80 um, food. Good to know, confirmed. It's nice of it to be telling me my current hunger. It's almost like that's a glitch. I don't know why it's doing that, but I'll take it because it's helpful. Um, okay, so what are we going to need to do now? Let's let's just make a writer while we're at it, and I'll wire it all in in a sec. Uh, logic. Logic. It'll be in out. In out, I'm sure of it. Gold and copper, one apiece. We don't have any of that sort of stuff, so we're just going to... We're just going to cook up a bit now, if I don't get stuck on this door. Hmm. Gold takes so long. All right. In out, here we go. Very exciting. This should be, uh, I think we can get this done in this episode. I think, I think, I hope, I'd like to. Let's just make sure. Reader, writer, yeah. All right. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god, you fat-footed idiot. All right, let's go. Uh, no, 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 we don't need a, like, a reader. We need a, we need a writer. Logic writer switch, negative. Logic reader, logic writer. Okay, so we've got data in, we've got data out, and we've got power there. Are they going to be able to play nice there? They might. They might. Um, that's all right, we'll make it work. We'll make this work. All right, grab out me bloody cable. Two of which I have. No, no, no. We're gonna need. We're gonna need more than that. All right. So we're gonna cook up a bunch of um, copper, and we're gonna make a bunch of cable. Oh, forty-two. Yeah, let's cook it. Let's go. Not all of it, but a lot. Oh man, this is pretty cool. We're getting there. I mean, we're never going to be out of the woods. There's always new projects. I think someone was asking us like for ideas. It's like, can you give me ideas of what I can build for my base now that I've built this, that, and the other? And uh, I mean, I I have infinite ideas <laughs> because I love the idea of building in. Wait, what's going on here? Are you the pipe bender? You are too, you silly sausage. Um, I like building in sort of engineering fail safes. That actually excites me ridiculous. You might recall I mentioned make a CO2 dump system over your entire like, um, like engineering space in case there's a fire. 
you know, some sort of quick release, pull a handle or something like that, and the entire room just gets absolutely suffocated in CO2. Or even, you've got vacuum out here. Like, that is that is an Earth problem. That's how we deal with it in engineering, because of Earth. But you're surrounded by vacuum on the moon. Maybe you have an emergency vent system. You just immediately vent the entire room. I don't know. Um... Like, have you got a have you got a furnace working inside a fully sealed part of your base? Like, that's that's a tough question. That's tough to get happening. Um, all sorts of crazy things you can do. What about like to me? I the thing I really want eventually is to have a central hub right in the middle of my base, and it's a DC control room. So it has light switches and everything on every room and corridor around. So like red green light for you know. Uh, the temperature and all that sort of stuff. So like a monitoring station in the center and you, at a glance you can see if there are any issues and then potentially wire it so you could remotely close blast doors and isolate parts of your base. So say you did have some sort of fire ripping through your base and igniting the uh, atmosphere or something like that, you could close the blast doors, that sort of thing. And I suppose after that you could, you know, you could uh, duplicate your save and you could manufacture a situation, maybe even in multiplayer. Maybe that's something we'll do one day. We'll get someone to start the fire or something and try and control it from DC. That'd be cool. Anyway, so here we go. We've got our math unit, right? So we're going to have to give it power. Um, well, actually, let's start with the reader, right? Reader sends out and it's got to go into here. All right. Let's follow the sensible, the sensible path, right? So we're going to go like this. We'll go input one, right? Reader. Now we go to math unit. Now this is the thing that I'm curious about. Can I... Can I do something like that? I can't. Now I have concerns about running power through the data line as well i know you can i'd rather not um but i don't think there's an easy way to do it other than to attempt to make just more space so what we might do is just just for the time being because i want i'd like to keep them separate i'm just gonna move this down one unary we go logic math uh we'll put the Let's, no, 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 I'll just grab that. Grab the wire strippers. Boom. Down. Right. Easy peasy. Again, this isn't its final form. Like, this is just... Like, someone was sort of, Oh, you're going to regret putting the uh, solar panels down there? I'm like, oh, mate, are you new to the channel? This is, uh, this is iterative. This is not a final system. So we're just going to run that up and over. Like, I know it's ugly, but in, if anything, it's actually more sort of helpful to, I think, to sort of see what's going on. Oh, what are we going to do here? Oh, you can do like a, a corner, can't you? Three-way corner. Oh, geez, good luck in orienting this. Uh. Oh. oh, I think I got it. Boom. All right, there you go. So there's our power feeding into to both those units. Wonderful, right? So we've got power in. Now we... Oh, the out's at the bottom. Okay, interesting. We're going to now want to run that down which is going to be a bit of an obstacle course as well. So let's see what we can do. Can we run cables? No. No. I just wanted a corner. Put that down. Oh, that's rough. You can't... Okay. So you just can't share their space at all. 
All right, well, it's not going to get... Con Look, okay, I was trying to do a wire layout that was basic, right? That you wouldn't get confused by. Um, instead, let's just do this, right? Because at the same time, think of it like this. Each of these things are going to be moving along the cable doing their own thing, right? But at the end of the day... What goes in, what this actually reads from all the noise is what I tell it to read, right? So I'll say, um, well, there you go, logic reader. It's the only input, right? Um, but if we were to put the ma um, this, if we were to put the memory unit on the thing, and then you went now, and now it's got like multiple things. You could see there, you can go from memory or for reader, right? So it's smart enough to say, hey, you've got multiple uh, channels running along here. What do I put, through? you know, what do I detect? What do I read, right? So we go change to logic reader. Yeah, 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 that's what we want there. Okay, cool. And we could just run the power through as well. The problem, I suppose the only issue with running power through that same line is that if you did overload the system somehow, you're going to burn all your logic out. I don't know if that's necessarily a huge problem because in that scenario, you're already burning out the power, which probably powers the logic. So running logic and data through there together probably isn't a big deal, to be perfectly honest, now that I think about it. Interesting. So we could clean this up. I was just trying to keep all the cables separate so it was easier for someone that's new to this to understand. Anyway, we got there in the end. Oh, come on. Come on, fat hands. All right, here we go. Down we go. Input there. Boom. Cool. So if we were to grab our screwdriver, you go logic memory. And then we go uh, divide. Turn it on. Now we haven't changed this. Oh, whoopsie daisies. So let's go 1.8 C for the small. Oh, whoops. So there you go. So that's feeding 1.8, right? And so this is now outputting uh, the 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 division one. Yeah. 74 degrees. Doesn't seem right. There might be something back to front going on there. Oh, it's definitely got the sol there you go. Sol angle, 136. That seems that seems plausible there. Yeah, 90, yeah. And then it's outputting 70 degrees. So if you were to test this, that's 50, 60, 70. Yep, that sounds about right. That looks like it's working to me. All right, so all we got to do is rig this in for power. Um, power input. Well, you know what? Since we're just jamming everything on the same network anyway, let's just jam them all in now. Hopefully you're still with me. At least when I tried to illustrate the different... Keeping everything separate, maybe you understood what I was trying to get at. All right. Now the problem is we we need to gener we need to actually give that power. So after all of that messing about, we're gonna do this. Um, you know what? We might be able to clean that up. Go corner. What happens if I do that? Oh, okay, cool. So it completes it automatically for you. That's wonderful. All right, cool. In fact, we could we could put that back in the original position if we wanted, but we don't. Hey, all right. Now we're cooking. And we're going to have just enough time to catch it before the sun goes down, I think. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Well, I'll have to, I'll have to show you later, I guess. All right. 
currently flashing an error, and that's because we haven't uh, completed it with the input. We haven't told it what input to read. So you go, logic, no, we want you to read the math unit. So change to math, yeah? And then output to solar panel, and output it to the vertical, look at this. Probably don't want that. We want it to output to the vertical. There we go. There we go. Are you re are you moving? What data are you receiving? Isn't that interesting? What's going on here? Zero degrees or question mark degrees. Hmm. Hmm. Right. So don't worry that it just rearranged. Uh, um like that we just we'll just straighten it out let's put it around I right, see all right I think that's right oh, it's gonna be one or the other it'll be back to front all right so in summary it's taking this reading which is like I said, it's not a number or it, it isn't not a number because it's giving us question mark and this is drawing some sort of data from it. Like it looks like it's tracking, it's tracking the inver inverse of the sun. You see what I mean? It's tracking the sun's position down there on the other side. That's interesting. You could probably do something with that. You could probably make a clock with that, actually, right? If this thing's going to all... If whatever this is feeding it, it's always going to feed data on the sun's rotation. I think you could make a reliable clock from that. I mean, that's just off the top of my head. We might, I'm going to let this episode run a little bit. I don't want to leave you blokes hanging because uh, we should showcase the, uh, the actual uh, result. Now, this is obviously drawing power, right? Because... All these logic units are drawing power as well, and that's doing stuff, right? The battery may well not be big enough. Uh, we'll do our rounds just real quickly while we wait for the morning. I mean, hey, I, I say it like I'm I'm doing nice guy me by showing you it working, but I want to see it working too. So <laughs> I don't want to wait another couple of days. Potato is wilting. 55 degrees! What the hell is going on here? Oh my goodness. This is not good. Um, Alright. Set inward. Alright, uh, set out. Holy heck, what has happened here? That is interesting. Geez, we got warm, didn't we? But that's a weird spike. Now, obviously, I did something different with the uh, the... It could well be because we radically changed the CO2 density in the mixture. So it's changed the heat capacity potentially for the system. I don't know. Um, I'm just sort of trying to figure it out myself. You can harvest them. They've grown.
surely the you know you, you you go back to your first principles right what did we do different and what we did different was mess around with my exhaust on my on my thing which didn't seem that hot but in some way it's affected this this system the other thing is that i i've I've wondered if the amount of CO2 that you have in a system actually affects the growth rate of the plants. So I don't know, maybe they generated more heat, but I suppose they went through their entire cycle and they always do an entire life cycle. So that doesn't make a lot of sense either. But anyway, that's how you've got to engineer a problem team. You've got to have a good think about it. Let's get a little bit of pressure out of here. There you go, that's perfect. That's the system that we want. Let's just harvest them now. How strange. If you have any suggestions on your sort of inner process, please do let me know what you think has happened here. I don't, I'm not sure. But um, they're my sort of working theories off the bat. Bear in mind, remember I'm doing all this live, making it up as I go. Okay, clear potato, all good low pressure low temperature this is this is business as usual so can i detect through the wall i can't okay out we go how interesting Let's, uh, let's investigate a little bit, shall we? What's going on with this system? All right, we've got our 14 mole of CO2. Temperature's at 13 degrees. Does that seem high? Three hundred KPA. That's fine. It's always been pretty low pressure stuff. We don't have a lot in here. Oxygen, all the all the readings seem kind of normal. 0 0.02x, but I think the x was always there, that tiny bit. Interesting. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure what's uh, what's the geo. All right, well, look, I don't want to twiddle my fingers too much. Interesting. Look at this. Our power grid's gone, right? which shows us that the small battery is not actually enough to sustain it overnight. Now, we could turn it off, but that defeats the point of, this is automation, right? That would defeat the point, right? So what I'll do just for the moment is I'll grab that spare battery and then when the sun's coming up, I'll put it in, but we're gonna need a larger battery. Or I suppose we could implement a maybe some sort of if then scenario like if the sun is below x angle then turn this system off i mean i don't know that would wouldn't that require another system to turn it on and off as well i'm not sure how you go with if for loops that moderate power you know what i mean <laughs> if this happens then turn off all right i'm off well that's it you can't use a loop you can't use an if statement to turn it back on because it now has no power um yeah i don't know well look the immediate solution to me is put a larger battery in there we don't have spare because we only have two large batteries Jeez, this is taking longer than i thought the 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 night cycle according to our satellite our solar panel it's only halfway I think. Oh, well, no, no, no. That's when it lost power, actually. So presumably what lost power while we're upstairs. So I think the sun could be coming any moment. Anyway, so let's just pop that there. So this is interesting. Okay, what do, well, what do we do next? Let's have a quick debrief, team. That we got to watch this room and see what's going on there. That's interesting, but otherwise it should be fine. We've got plenty of O2. Our power system is going to be shoring up pretty well. So, so we have a few options. Looking into battery tech, I suppose, would be smart to really complete this solar panel's life. 
Now, I don't really... I can't remember. Uh, I think maybe the larger batteries require a little bit more oomph. They need steel. There we go. Okay, so... Let me think. Um, power... What, there it is. What do you need? Solder. Okay, cool. You could tell I was trying to shortcut it in my mind. I was like, if I can't build bigger batteries, what if I build a bunch of control units? But we need to build solder. And I haven't really considered that just yet. All right. We'll pop this in. Everything should be good to go. Look at this dish go. Except I think it's back to front. That's fine. We'll turn it around. It'll be one and done. Once we uh, adjust this, we're good. Please stop. So we go around to zero degrees. Everything's working. Now, like I said, this is pretty entry level logic for this game. So those of you who already know this stuff, this is probably not new, but some of you guys, this might be your first thing. So if you have any questions or issues, ask, not just me, but our little community will look after you. But there you go, look at that. 80% efficiency, 81, it's potentially gonna well, actually, I don't know if it will necessarily go up because that angle offset that we discussed is what's making it not 100%. Obviously, it can't lower all the way to the horizon, so it can't look directly at the sun, so it's never going to give us 100% uh, efficiency. So it should climb in efficiency as that error holds less bearing, and it would be 100% efficient at its peak. Um so yeah, we could modify it, but look, it's generating over 400 watts per tick, even at its lowest efficiency, which to be perfectly honest, like in the scheme of things, that's not that bad. That's pretty damn good, right? And now it's also jammed into our grid as well. So it's, there you go, you can see our grid's charging. It must have been drawing something that was causing the red tick. But yeah, so we're charging our grid there as well. Perfect. And I'll put this battery away. Boom. All right. And now we have an automated dish that will just do its own thing. This one will supplement it for the time being. But that was the whole point of the experiment. Guys, a little bit of a longer one today. But, you know, we needed to show it in the sun. Um, furnace is going to be next on the list, to be perfectly honest. We need to do that. So I know some of you are pretty excited. Uh, to watch me blow myself up because I'm no expert on the furnace. A lot of it is theoretical, if we're being really honest. So we're going to see real practical application of theory. Should be interesting. Team, might just leave it there for the time being and I will catch you guys on the next one.